Greetings, Greetings. And, uh, our friends out there in uh, YouTube land. Very privileged to have on the line with us right now, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. He's going to be doing a presentation called The African Presence in Australia and the Pacific on December 18th and the 19th. On the 18th, it will be from 7 uh, p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And then on the 19th, from 11 in the morning to 12.30 p.m. And that will be Eastern Standard Time, and it will be on Zoom. So we, uh, we're we really privileged to have with us today uh, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Um, glad to see you today. Looks like you're doing well. Uh, I, I wanted to look for a plaid shirt, but I couldn't find one, so I can't. Well, you see, I don't have one on either, brother. So, you know, in fact, basically we're matching colors, at least some of it anyway, so. Okay, all right. Well, it, it's definitely a pleasure to see you. Uh, this time last year, we were still reveling in the glow from our, our journey to Kemet and Sudan. And uh, we're sitting here, but I know that you have scheduled uh, a journey to Kemet in 2021. So we'll get into that and give you the opportunity to talk about some of those travels. Uh, but let's switch gears and talk about this presentation uh, that you're going to be doing on tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, what do you want folks to know first and foremost? That's four months. I have a monthly webinar. It's in two parts. As you mentioned, it'll be this Friday and Saturday, the 18th and 19th. And this time we're going to continue our global journeys and we're going to look at the Black presence in Australia and the Pacific Islands. We've done one on Black women in history. We did another one, a general one. We've done one on the African presence in Europe, ancient and modern. And then we did one on the presence in Asia. So we want to continue that global odyssey because we will people. And uh, Friday night, I'm going to concentrate on Australia, the indigenous people of Australia, their history, their relationship to the rest of the global black community. Um, the history of resistance to um, European oppression, domination, white supremacy, racism, imperialism, attempted genocide, whatever term you want to use, they're all correct. Um, talk about the status of Black people in Australia today. We'll talk about the Garvey movement in Australia. We we'll talk about the Freedom Rise and the Black Panther Party. That's Friday night. And then on Saturday morning, We'll look at the black presence in the Pacific. We'll look especially at Melanesia, but also Micronesia and Polynesia. And this is important. These areas for the most part have not been looked at from an African perspective. And so to introduce it, let me see if I can show a few photographs just as a kind of a, a tease and give people a sense if I can figure out how to do it. Um, a tease as to what we're going to focus on um, this. Let's see if I can pull this up. Oh, here we go. Okay, so of course, this is down under. Australia means great south end. And of course, this isn't the indigenous name. And I won't talk too much. I'll try to save most of it for the webinar. But it's good mm -hmm. to hang out with you for a minute. And I appreciate the opportunity to share and get people excited. Um, Australia means great South land, and it's a continent. It's the second smallest continent in the world. I think those roots are Latin, Austral, which I think means southerly. Now, the point I was gonna make is on my first trip to Australia, I don't know if it was my bright idea or somebody else asked me, Renoko, or maybe this was just a discussion that was going on on the internet at the time and social media, um, what was the original name for Australia? Australia obviously is not an indigenous name. And I went from community to community of indigenous people and I asked them that question and nobody could tell me. And I began to realize at that time that uh, continents are, a, I think, a European phenomenon. And I began to think the same thing in terms of Africa itself because I get that question a lot too and I'm sure you do as well. What was the original name for Africa? Well, that presupposes that ancient people thought of themselves as living on continents rather than particular regions. 
anyway, this is Australia. It's a big place. It's divided up into several states, Queensland, and all of them are racist. Um, the sisters and brothers in uh, Australia called Queensland KKK country, Ku Klux Klan country. And then you have New South Wales. Now, these were the original um, settler colonies. Australia is a prison settlement from the British. New South Wales here is where the British first landed in January 1788. Apparently, these sisters and brothers have been living in peace and harmony until the white man came. And then you have South Australia, all prison settlements in this vast area, Western Australia, and then the Northern Territory. And at the far top is Bathurst and Melville Island. And there live a, a group of sisters and brothers called the Tiwi. And then, and when they meet you, they say, they say Jumbo, like if you were in East Africa. And then of course, down here, you have Victoria, which the big city is Melbourne. They'll be playing the Australian Open Tennis Tournament uh, in February. I can't wait to see Naomi Osaka. I've fallen in love with that sister big time. And then you have Tasmania, which has a special history. So that's the map. And then just briefly, this is one of the great indigenous uh, resistance leaders. Now, I don't ever want to minimize the suffering of our ancestors, but we have to emphasize that we did more than suffer. So that if we were talking about enslavement in the antebellum South in the United States, I would want to talk about more than the suffering. I would want to talk about more than black people picking cotton and cultivating rice in indigo and tobacco. I want to talk about those black people who fought back. I want to talk about resistance. As Brother Malcolm used to say, cotton picking don't move me, but the master who planned the insurrection, that's inspiring, not the master. The oppressed person, the oppressed person, the enslaved person, the colonized person who struggled to keep the family together. That's inspiring. And you have a similar history of resistance in Australia. This is this is a bronze statue of a man named Pimoway, and he's one of the great resistance leaders. Very powerful looking piece. And then is yours truly, Renoko Rashidi himself, legend in his own mind, in front of what I call the Magic Mountain of Uluru. This is in the very center of Australia. It's oftentimes called the Red Center. And local people believe that this is the birthplace of creation in the navel of the universe. And there is a spiritual aura about this place and all of Australia for that matter. And then this is just what one of the folk looked like. Now, the Aboriginal Australians, so-called Aboriginal Australians, are not monolithic. It's just like Africa. Not all African people look the same. There's a wide range of phenotypes. And this little girl, cute little girl, reminds me of my daughter, lives in northern Queens on the uh, eastern coast. And this brother is an elder from Bathurst Island. I've already mentioned Bathurst Island. And there you have a community of black people called the Tiwi. And I'm willing to bet you that most of us have never even heard of the Tiwi. And so there is a vast black world. There is an, an ancient African diaspora that is not rooted in enslavement. And we have barely explored that area. This is a very distinguished looking brother. I've been able to go to Bathurst Island and visit these folk on two occasions. It's beautiful there too. And of course, this is our queen, this is Truganini. A lot of people have probably seen this photograph. Truganini is the last of the full blood Tasmanian. Remember now, let's correct this myth, that not all of these sisters and brothers were wiped out. I know there's a popular, uh, what should we say, uh, misconception, misunderstanding about them. They did survive. Most of the, if not, um, all of them, then most of the full bloods were wiped out and this is the last one. But I found out when I went to Australia and Tasmania itself, that British seal hunters captured indigenous women and used them as sexual slaves. And from those unions, children were born and they survived even today. Most of them are very, very light complexion, but they are quick to tell you about their indigenous ancestry. And so whenever I see a post on Facebook or Instagram 
that says all these sisters and brothers perish, it's very offensive. And they are very offended by it. So stop saying that and do a little research. And I'm going to tell the story of the Aboriginal Tasmanians this Friday night. It's not a pretty story, but it's a story that needs to be told. I have a whole section of books on this very subject. And for a while, back in the 1990s, I would take the books and put them on a shelf and then put something in front of the shelf. I mean, this story is that painful, cut in half, roasted alive, all that stuff. And, it, you know, it would be difficult for, for me to even give presentations about it. But a sister friend of mine who I'll never forget says, Renoko, as painful as it is for you to tell the story, to know the story, think of the pain that the people who endured it suffered. Their story has to be told. I'm going to tell it Friday night. So this is Truganini, and you can see by the expression on her face that this sister has seen a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. These are the kind of books that are typically found about them. And I use this title, I use the cover of this book to illustrate my point, The Last of the Tasmanians, The Extinction of the Tasmanians, War on the Tasmanians. So in the early 1990s and probably late 1980s, I too was writing some of my best essays in terms of the quality of the work about the destruction of the Tasmanian Aboriginals. And when I went there and I met the descendants of them, I was really ashamed, all right? Just a little map. I'm sorry it's so small, but here you can see Australia and the other islands, at least many of them are the Pacific. You can see, I don't know if you can see the cursor here, but way down here is New Zealand where you have the people called the Maori, and some of them also seem to have uh, they, the pictures I've seen from the late 19th century. Clearly, some of them are black people. And then you have New Guinea itself, which is divided into two. You have um, Papua New Guinea independence is 1963 on this side. And West Papua, which is a colony of Indonesia. Then this brings to mind also this question of people of color. That seems to be a popular term that's used these days. The problem I have is a lot of people of color are even more racist than Europeans are. So we need to examine that. In the course of these webinars, and this one this weekend is not gonna be any exception, we find ourselves examining the concepts. Even what is an African? Can we legitimately call these sisters and brothers in Australia and a makes a black person. Some people are so light, you can't tell they're black or not, you know, typically. So what constitutes African and black identity? And how does it apply to this particular part of the world? So you have Melanesia here, the black islands, literally the black islands, uh, New Caledonia, which is still a French colony. I've already mentioned New Guinea, Papua New Guinea and West uh, Papua. Uh, the Papuans are a majority population in New Guinea. So West Papua, Papua New Guinea is very accurate. You have Vanuatu, which I, that was my last trip to the South Pacific, I think in 2014, I believe this when it was, you have the Solomon Islands, the only ones, the only island nation in this area I haven't been to. And I was on my way there when you had the massive hurricane, I mean cyclone there a few years ago. I think I still have the tickets and I'm determined to go. And then you have Fiji, and I think I've covered them. And then you have uh, Micronesia, the little islands. And the most important one from my perspective is one called Palau or Belau. And then of course, Polynesia, which stretches all over the Pacific, all the way from New Zealand here to Hawaii and Tonga and Samoa and Tahiti. And I'm gonna look at all of that, or at least a lot of it. Look at this fine sister from Fiji, with this big Afro, makes me proud. Uh, a lot of the women in Fiji wear natural hair and Afros in particular. Fiji is a delightful place. And these sisters and brothers all say, or the vast majority of them say, and say it with they come from Africa. Maybe that you have the world's first blondes and redheads. You know, black people, Africa is the mother continent. And from Africa springs almost everything. And the children of Africa.
around the world. So it's not first rate. And this child is so-called unmixed, has two dark-skinned black parents, but blonde hair is not uncommon among them. So these are some very interesting sisters and brothers that say they left Africa and came to the thousands of years ago. The flagging and little gold. This is a portrait of Kamehameha, the great king of Hawaii that uh, attempted to unify the Hawaiian Islands about 1810, 1812. And you can see that's a black man. There's a racist song that was developed uh, by some, I think, white Americans who went to Australia a long time ago. And I, I'll just repeat it. It goes, you might call them Hawaiians, but they look like niggas to me. Okay, So this is Kamehameha. Kamehameha, the great, very big people. And the indigenous Hawaiians are very, very small in number right now. And then, of course, I have this one photograph with Dr. Ben Yakin in here. This is Dr. Ben. Why would I have him up here? Because whenever I do these webinars, I always get an ancestor scholar to be our guide from the spiritual realm. So why Dr. Ben? Because Dr. Ben is the first person that I know of to look at this area from an African perspective. In the early days, he visited uh, New Guinea and he wrote a multi-volume book. I think it's called they all look alike or we all look alike. And he talked about the similarities between these South Pacific Islanders and sisters and brothers in parts of the world. So Dr. Ben not only talked about, uh, took people to Kenneth so they could see it for themselves, but he talked about black people in a part of the world that not many other people have looked at from an African perspective. Um, A photograph of him, and in 1975 in Black World Magazine, there was a, an article, an interview that he did with Black folk in Australia and the Pacific Islands. And this is just a here for a reason. This is the purposes. Because of all the books I've had, and I've written and edited 20, none of them really focus exclusively on Black folk in Australia and the Pacific Islands. For me, it's kind of like a jewel in the crown maybe the last thing or the last great horizon for me. And I have been in this area a number of times, but the section about Australia and the Pacific, this is my first for children. Hopefully it won't be the last, a Sada Garvey and me, a global African journey for children. You can go to my website, drrenoco.com and find it. And finally, this is the flyer we're using for the webinar on morning. This is a photograph I took of a brother in one of the things that I take a lot of pride in, and you probably know, is showing my original photographs. So in these presentations, in this webinar, I'll be showing largely original pictures. It's going to be very, very, very special. And uh, my work, especially my work in the museums, and uh, it's going to be special. I try to make it child friendly and I try to make it family friendly. And at the end of each session, we have a discussion and question and answer. Here is so Brother Vince, I want to thank you for allowing me to share that, taking your time and helping me to promote what I hope is going to be a really wonderful event. Well, I'm, I'm still here. Uh, and, uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to be able to share this. We've had quite a few folks who have uh, tuned in on Facebook and YouTube, and uh, they should be aware of what they have to do in order to take advantage of this. Uh, do you all want to? You, all you have to do, I should have mentioned that. Thank you. All you have to do is go to Eventbrite. Yeah. Event right and then put ben Renoco. Or you can to um you can email me Renoco at hotmail or go to my website drdrrenoco.com. Okay. The information is very accessible. All right. And could you talk about your Patreon page? Because folks who uh, are on your page, your Patreon are subscribers, they can actually access this event for free. Could you talk about your Patreon page and why folks should connect with you on that? 
Yeah, I do have a Patreon page. I still spend a lot of time on Facebook. Okay. All right. So um, just one this last- is a subscriber page. And okay. We, I don't know, we seem to not be having a good connection. I don't know if it's on my end or not. Yeah, sometimes but, it's just a bit when you have when you, yeah, when you, uh, Yeah, I was just going to say sometimes it's it's the, the bit the rate. Webinars are free. You get in there. Okay. All right. Just one quick question before we go. Uh, and I know you've dedicated your life's work uh, to documenting the existence of, I'll just use the term melanated people. In your, in your initial remarks, you, it seemed as though you were saying that we are not considering these people all over the world Africans. Could you just talk a little bit about how melanated folks got all around the world? Well, they walked and they sailed. I know that there's a popular belief in what is called Pangea, that the world was all connected at one point and when it's separated, that's how these black folk got to these various parts of the world. But that is largely a myth. There was a Pangea. There was a time when all the So the African people, the descendants of Africa, the black people who are in these parts of the world today are there as a result of their own ingenuity and migrations that have lasted for thousands and thousands of years and are still going on. History is the movements of people. And that's how we can explain these sisters and brothers in these parts of the world so far from Africa itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that at some point we'll be able to talk about this in much more depth and give folks an understanding of how Black folk ended up here in America and other parts of the world. It's really a fascinating thing. And the photographs that you have taken from all these different places, I mean, they're fantastic photographs. One more thing before I let you go. I got to get back to Kemet. And I want you to know that I got that iPhone 12 Pro Max that practically shoots in the dark. <laughs> so no more camera fees and the best possible photographs you could ever want from inside those ancient and, and sacred places. Well, the good thing about Egypt is something new is happening all the time. Now the entrance to the step pyramid is open. And all the times I've been traveling to Egypt since 1991, I've never known it to be open. The step pyramid is of course the building designed by Imhotep. And now the tomb chamber is open. They've been renovating it for a long time. I can't wait to do that. And even more than that, the new Egyptian museum should be opening anytime. And, and so what I'm gonna do is I intend to spend about a week there. In fact, I'm gonna take a group to your country, Ghana in July, and then from Egypt, Egypt from there, um, Egypt from Ghana. I've just been named within the last week and a half to be on the board of curators for a new museum in Africa, the Pan-African Heritage Museum of the World. And I intend to have a lot to say about what goes in that museum. And so they're gonna have a conference at the end of July. And then right after that is Panafest. And then I'll take my group to Egypt. So hopefully brother, we can connect, but I know you wanna talk about Africans in ancient America in other places. So let's do that, you know, as soon as you want, maybe next month if you like, and we'll okay. continue our global journeys. Wonderful. Wonderful. We, we'll schedule that for next month and we can bring in some of our younger scholars who definitely have questions and we definitely want to provide answers. So um, looking forward to that conversation. And again, I thank you so much for joining me today. Nice and love, brother. to you and in, in the presentation tomorrow and Saturday. So for one last time, you can go to eventbrite.com and enter Renoco in the search field, and you can get your tickets for this event. It's $25. That covers both lectures. You can tune in tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and then on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and get access to all the, the wisdom and knowledge that comes from my dear brother and all the beautiful photographs that he has taken. And with that, I will say, Aluta Kontanua, Ashe Hotep. And we'll see you next time. My hotel. Hotel.